Our first project planning tool uh, that we're looking at in this series is uh, a work breakdown structure. Sometimes it's said that project management is just a lot of different breakdown structures. Um, we're going to look at work breakdown structures, which is the hierarchy of what needs to be achieved. Uh, some project management books talk about a product breakdown structure, which is breaking down the product. It's just a different way of breaking down the, uh, the project. We're then going to look at cost accounts, uh, and sometimes they're called a cost breakdown structure. And in lecture 12, we'll look at something called an organisation breakdown structure. So project management's all about breakdown structures. Work breakdown structure is the one we're looking at in this little video clip. So we take our project and we can break it down into different work packages. Now, that's not to be confused with the phases of the project. However, one way of breaking down the project is by its different phases. Uh, we'll look at some examples. Just a word of warning, if you paid attention to the Lecture 2 videos, you'll realise that your objectives have to be clear for any project. There is no purpose in trying to create a work breakdown structure for a project where your objectives are not clear. So before you start your work breakdown structure, are your objectives clear? Have they been agreed? Has your project specification been signed off? OK, so I'm going to take a work breakdown structure. Uh, here's the project, Project X, and I'm going to break it down into the phases of the project, which is one way of breaking the project down into different work packages. So this project involves concept, feasibility, design, development, manufacture, distribution. And once we've got the detail of the uh, of the dates for these, you know, this might be enough detail for the strategic plan. The senior management, you know, when does the design finish? When does development finish? When does distribution start? The key dates. Um, these are the phases of the project. Anything you do for feasibility becomes a part of the feasibility work package. Anything you do in development testing becomes part of the development work package. Breaking the project down by phases is just one way. We could also break the project down by organisational departments. Now, as we'll learn in a later lecture, some organisations are organisational based. They're based in functional organisations. And if you're running a project in that environment, then using this method for your work breakdown structure might be the best method. I want to make it clear, this is the same project we're looking at, Project X. But now, I've said the work packages are essentially done by a different department. So the styling department, the development department, the test department, the sales department. Anything that happens on your project that's done by the salespeople comes under the sales work package. So the work packages in this project are the same as the departmental names. But we've got a third way of creating the work breakdown structure. And that's to break the project down into its constituent products. Now, for very technical or modular projects, this can be the best way to go. So, for instance, let me uh, take a mobile phone, and we could say the products involved here are the software, the packaging, the training material or the manual, the battery supply, the GPS system, the camera. It's a modular device. So we could take our project, Project X, and say it's got some hardware, it's got some software. We need to develop some test equipment. We need some training material. It's the same project, but we're using a different method to create the work packages. Now, there's no right way and there's no wrong way. And if I gave all of you students the same project and asked to, to create a work breakdown structure, they would all be different and they could all be right. The main question is, have you included everything that needs to be done to deliver this project? So actually, there's a fourth way of creating a work breakdown structure, and that is to mix up the first three. Phase is a very common way in engineering departments by organisation, by product, 
or by any mixture of the three. I'm not going to suggest a mixture of the three in the next slide. Uh, whichever method you use, the work package can then be broken down into activities. So here's Project X. I've got a work package called Design, and I'm breaking that down into the activities of design, the handset, the base unit, the keypad. And this third level of detail, uh, when it's complete across all work packages, this third level of detail might be sufficient for the operational plan, the middle management. We can then break those activities down into tasks. Now, ideally, what we're looking for at the task level is a verb-noun combination, because somebody is going to be doing this. So instead of having a task which is about, say, switches, we want to specify the switch, purchase the switch, install the switch, test the switch. So a verb and a noun makes it absolutely clear. So it doesn't just say installation. It doesn't just say testing. It is absolutely clear what this task is. Uh, you might expand that. So for instance here, instead of create drawing, it says create the chassis drawing. Establish the component costs. Test the suspension components. It is a task. It is clear what needs to be done. Now, this is probably enough for our day-to-day -day plan for the design department, and I'm suggesting that the manufacturing department perhaps don't need to see all of this level of detail, which is why there might be more than one plan. This, then, would give us four levels in our work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure needs to be as detailed as the project requires. If it's a big project, thousands of tasks, we may have five or six different levels before we get down to the tasks. If it's a small project that we've done many times, we might just have um, two or three levels in the work breakdown structure. But templates could be used that we can share the task list for a project with other people. So, four levels. We've got level one, the project title. Level two, the work packages, could be based on phase, on organisation, on product or a mixture. I'm calling level three the activities and level four the tasks. You could have groups of activities, then the activities, groups of tasks. You could have as many levels as you need. On paper, you could manage three, four levels quite easily. Once you get to five or six levels, you start to need some software to manage it. One of the benefits of using software is you can put a numbering system automatically onto your work breakdown structure. So therefore, every task has a unique ID number. In this case, the internal fixing design is task number 1.3.1.3. Anybody who spends time on that can book their hours to that code. Anybody who purchases equipment can quote that code and we know where the money has been spent. Okay, a work breakdown structure gives us an opportunity of creating milestones. Milestones are those important events that happen in a project but often have zero duration or very short duration. It could be a meeting, an approval meeting. So one way of indicating a milestone is to put it at the bottom of the work breakdown structure, where you're saying the design has been completed. Important dates, key decision points might also become milestones, and they can be used as part of the communication, the key milestones in the project. We complete the design, we complete the customer approval, we hand over to the users. There will be key milestones. In this example, I've created a, a project. It's some sort of new product. We're doing some market research. Market research has been broken down into verb nouns, prepare, questionnaire, establish market size. And at the bottom, I've created a milestone, often shown as a diamond, market research completed. So at the bottom of a leg of your work package, you could create a milestone. Now, one way of creating a work breakdown structure is to mix the phases with either the products or with the organisation. Because every project tends to have three phases. The preparation phase, 
the doing phase, and the evaluation and review phase. So the tasks that are write the project charter, that comes in preparation. Establish the project team. These are verb nouns. These are tasks that need doing. Identify senior management champion. Create project vision. These are tasks that need doing, and they all go in the preparation phase. Then we need to do the project. We need to design something, build something, purchase something, install something, test something. And we could break that execution phase by products or by organisation. And the final phase of any project is evaluation. Uh, we're going to have a, a lecture on project reviews where we evaluate the project. Closing the project down, making sure that everything is finished, getting paid, making sure the customer's happy, filling in evaluation forms, returning equipment, the evaluation and closure phase. So every project tends to have a preparation phase, a doing phase, an evaluation phase. What tends to happen when people create a work breakdown structure is they concentrate on the doing, the design, the testing, the developing, the constructing, the installing, the purchasing, and they forget about the preparation or the project management at the beginning, and they forget about the evaluation and the review at the end. There are certain benefits from using a work breakdown structure. Things are very well defined. We've got down to this verb noun. It's not just about the switches, it's about installing the switches, testing the switches. These things are independent. They have minimum interfaces. It's my job to install the switch. I don't test it, somebody else does that. So it's independent. We can estimate it. It's small enough to say installing the switches, hour each, five of them, it's five hours. The switches cost 20 pounds each, there's five of them, it's 100 pounds. We can estimate the time and the cost because we have broken down the project to a suitable amount. Uh, we can measure them. How many switches have we installed? So we can monitor progress. And we can adapt it. A work breakdown structure can be edited, things can be changed, things can be moved around. So work breakdown structure, a very good project management tool to tell you what you are doing and get the team to do it. In this photograph, we can see the team discussing the project. It is not the project manager saying, this is what you need to do. It's the project team saying, well, I think we need to do this, or do we need to do that? And no, I'm not sure. And they're talking to each other, and they're communicating. And actually, the project manager can step back and observe the project team. Who's, uh, who's got the right idea? Who's got the wrong idea? Who's talking too much? Who's not contributing? We want this project plan to be created by the project team. They're the guys who are going to be doing the work. So let's get the team to do it. And using post-it notes, uh, an ideal method, because we can move things around. If people disagree, we can move. No, we'll, we'll call it this or we'll call it that. It becomes the team's project. OK, here's a three-level one, just on, on post-it notes. This is far better than the project manager doing something on Microsoft Project. This project plan has been created by the project team. The title of the project at the top, there's seven work packages, and they've identified the tasks in each work package. Uh, here's one for a module that used to run at the university. Um, I've created this using PowerPoint. And you can see it's a little bit messy, perhaps, to, to, to use PowerPoint for this. Uh, we used to have a module where the students worked on a group project, and they had to do all of these different phases of work. Market research, design something, manufacture it, advertise it, market it, deal with the finances, set up a company to do this. And these are the tasks that they had to do. Finally, in this section, an online tool for a work breakdown structure is available. Uh, this should export and interface with things like Excel and Word. I find that actually you need a little knack to get it right. It can't do everything. I have trouble controlling the way the boxes are laid out as well. 
but as a graphical representation of a work breakdown structure. Here is a, a tool, wbstool.com. Here is somewhere where you can go online and create some work breakdown structures electronically. However, I mean, they look nice when you print them off. However, the best way I believe to create work breakdown structures is to get the team together with a big empty white wall and a pad of post-it notes. So that's work breakdown structures, one of our project planning tools.